Just how close can you get to cloning a Prusa 3D printer? There's no doubt that Prusa makes a great 3D printer, and you should probably just go buy one from them. But it's always kind of fun to try to clone an open source project just to see how close you can get. And I've already loosely done that with Log here. It's kind of like a Prusa Mark II. And you can go buy hardware that's really similar to the Prusa machine, but that's not where the real value is. The value is in the firmware. Things like SKU correction that make printing a lot more consistent. And that's what I want to do today. How close can I get to a Prusa Mark II? Can I load their firmware with a few tweaks and use all the features that make their printer so good? Well, we're going to find out. I even bought a mini Rambo board from Printed Solid to make it even closer to their configuration. Hmm, candy. So today we're going to swap out for the mini Rambo, load the Prusa firmware, and see just how close we can get and use some of that Prusa magic sauce. So, let's get to it. And if you buy a mini Rambo, this is just going to give you an idea of what's going to come in the box. Awesome sticker. Looks like we get a few of the end stop wires and the thermistor wires, maybe. You get the board. You get end stop switches and connectors if you request that, I believe. I believe that's a couple dollars more. And a USB cable. And here's a look at the board by itself. They use the snap-in type connectors for pretty much everything. And they do give you those connectors in the box. You could make them up if you want to. They do give you the pins. But these are usually pretty forgiving on the DuPont type connectors that I use on Log, so we'll probably just use that where we can. And of course the Rambo is going to use a lot different case than the Ramps does. This is the one from the genuine Prusa files. It should just slide in there right like that. We'll get our Ramps board and our case removed. Now there's a couple things different about this printer currently that are going to be different from a Mark II. The first one being my Y end stop is on a PCB. They use regular micro switches and the logic on these might not be the same. So we might have to adjust that in the firmware or maybe swap this out altogether. We'll see how that goes. Also something to note that I usually use single start lead screws, but I swapped out to these four start integrated screws just for this build. I want to see how close I can get to that Prusa. So that's what I'm using here. And a few things are going to be different on the wiring on this board versus a ramps board. One, we don't have to just tag in the hot end fan like we usually would. We have a spot for it and it will be auto controlled, so that'll be nice. And with our part cooling fan, we don't have to put it in the D9 lockdown terminal. It's going to be on the board in a DuPont connector, so I'll have to swap out the connector for that. Everything else should be pretty close. We'll have the hot end and bed terminated down here, and then the two power feeds from the 12 volt supply terminated right here. They do give you all those connectors. So I've got my part fan and my hot end fan connector switched out to DuPont connectors. We'll need that for this board. I've got the hot end and bed connectors on. And note on that bed connector especially, make sure that thing is nice and tight. Because these like to burn up on occasion. And that's the number one reason why they do. is because that ground isn't secure enough. So make sure these are really snug. So my bed and extruder are plugged in. And we'll just start with the motors over here. X motor goes on top. The Y motor goes next. Then both Z motors right here. Power's already in down here. We'll go to the end stops. The X end stop is right here, and notice it is a three pin. So we're only interested in signal and ground. So you want this pin down here, and this pin in the center. This one can be left open. So X end stop will go right there. And the Y end stop goes right here, but remember I have that PCB and it is three wire. So we're gonna go ahead and put it on there and just see how far we get. So it'll go right in here. Again, signal, ground, power on the other side. And then the heat bed thermistor goes right here. The extruder motor goes down over here, right there. Our Z probe goes on the Z minimum end stop right here. Your brown wire is your positive pin, the black wire is the signal pin, so make sure you get it put in the right places. Goes just like that. Your extruder thermistor goes right here. Your part cooling fan goes inside the plastic connector that's right here. The positive pin is towards the thermistor wires, so it goes right like this. And then your hot end fan goes on the bare pins right next to that connector. Still, the positive pin goes towards the thermistors, so right here like that. And that should be it other than our LCD cables. EXP1 will go in this slot on the outside with your red wire on the number 10 pin. And then EXP2 goes below it, same red wire on the 10 pin. And we're all wired up. 
Now I'll try to mount the whole thing back on the frame and get some zip ties on here. Honestly, not the messiest one of these I've ever done. I can probably even get the door shut. So the hardware part's done. Now on to the firmware. And I think it's going to be a little tricky. We're going to have to change a few things. But let's just run down the hardware really quick. We have the same lead screws. I do have a Mark 42 bed, so that shouldn't be an issue. I have an NPN inductive sensor for my Z probe, which Prusa uses a PNP, so that will definitely have to be flip flopped or something done with it. And the motor connections, I'm not really sure on. I made them all the same, but if you just flip a motor cable, that's going to flip the motor direction. So that might have to be changed up in firmware as well. But I think everything going forward should be firmware items. So let's go ahead and get it installed and see what it looks like stock. So let's head to the Prusa GitHub, and we'll do Prusa Firmware, and in the branch, we'll go to the Mark II, and we'll download the zip. Down here below, they do give you some instructions. We have to rename some of the configuration files. We do need the Rambo add-on for the Arduino IDE. We'll get that. And we have to rename that configuration file. No big deal. So let's go ahead and expand our Prusa Firmware. Downloads, Extract All. We'll open up the folder, firmware folder, and then we'll go into the variants folder and we'll grab the .h file that matches our board. We have a Rambo 13A, so it's this one right here. I'm going to right click and copy it, and I'll just paste it right here, and then I'm going to rename it. It needs to be configuration underscore prusa .h. Now we can copy this file and we can paste it into the main directory right here. Now we can go ahead and open up the firmware INO file. And if you head for the configuration underscore prusa.h, you'll see they call the mini Rambo board. You can compile this as a 2560 mega and it will work, but it's probably best if you have the Rambo library. So I'm going to go out and grab that plugin and we'll grab this library link right here. Back to the IDE, we'll go to file, preferences, and down here in additional boards, we'll paste it, hit OK. And then we can go to Board Manager, go to Tools, Board, Board Manager. And we can just search for Rambo, and we'll just install the newest version. We can close this. Now in Tools, if we go to Boards, our Rambo will be there. And we can go ahead and run a Verify, just to make sure that part's working. The Verify is successful, so that's good. Now let's see if we need to make any changes. Let's just scroll through this configuration a bit. So first up, motor axes. The extruder's probably going to have to be tuned later. It's set to 140. That's kind of close. Prusa uses a little smaller gear. I believe they use a 7. I'm using an 8. Um, that will probably be 125 for my machine. I'm going to leave it stock for now, and then I'm going to calculate it later. 3200 divided by 8, that's 400. That's a 4-start lead screw like I'm using, so no problem there. And stop inverting, we're going to have to play with that. That's something we're going to have to adjust after the first run through. So I'll check that later. I'll leave it default for now. Home position, mine might not be as big as a Prusa. The frame that I'm using, the end stop might make it a little bit smaller. So again, something I'm going to have to adjust. Default for now. Feed rates and Excel and stuff like that, that should be fine on this machine. The rest, temperatures, thermistors, things like that, PID tune. Let's leave it all default. Go ahead and upload and just see what happens. So we're cabled up USB, and on a Rambo board, you have to add power to it before you can upload. It doesn't get powered by USB, so go ahead and plug your power in and turn it on. And let's go to Tools, and we're on Rambo. We'll go to Port. It knows it as a Rambo, COM15. Let's hit Upload. And the upload is complete, and the printer's trying to greet us. How cute. Would you like to go through the setup process? Sure. It's going to do the first auto check to check for problems. Let's see how this turns out. Is the left hot end fan spinning? Yes, it is. Is the front fan spinning? Yes, it is. Checking the end stops. This should be interesting. Self-test error Y and Z. It wants us to check the wiring on that. Hmm. So my guess is it already thinks they're triggered. So back into the firmware. So for Y and Z, let's change this false to true. And re-upload. Firmware has been updated, now we're going to go through the self-test again. Fan is spinning. Front fan is spinning. It moved on to checking the hot end, so that's a good sign. The end stops are probably not triggered. Hot end okay. Now we're raising Z, we're going to check X a few times. We're going to check Y a few times. Now we're going to check Z. This is the big one. Can we hit that spot accurate enough 
for the self-test. And we did. Now it's moved on to checking the bed. It's heating up. And the bed's okay. It reads all correct. So the hardware's good. So we made it over the first hurdle. The hardware checks out good. And other than flipping those end stops, the only issue I had was with the LCD screen. Not all LCDs are the same. And Prusa, the plugs on it, they're actually flipped upside down. So be extra sure when you're cabling those up. Prusa tells you to put the red wire in the number 10 spot, but you might actually have to flip those over. And if you can't upload firmware, that's probably because the plugs are upside down and it's triggering a reset pin. So you're going to need to flip them and get them in the correct orientation. So just make sure that your LCD and your cables match up with your board. Now we move on to the calibration where we actually set the skew, where it's going to try to compensate for that. And it goes around and checks multiple spots on the bed. This is where it could get interesting. So we'll hit the button. We're going to rotate the knob until Z is all the way up. I think my logo is going to interfere with this. We're going to find out very soon. My Z is all the way up and my nozzle is clear. Let's hit the button and see what happens. We've made it to the second point. It's off to the third point. On to number four. Starting to get a little excited here. The first iteration is complete. Now it's going to do the second iteration. I've already made it further than I thought. This is impressive. Second iteration is complete. On to the third. The third is complete. And the XYZ calibration failed. So the clone's just a little bit too far off for the calibration to complete. So basically all I'm going to do is compare where the probe points are on the original to where they are on the clone and make adjustments from there. So on the original in this position, the probe is actually just a little bit further forward on the bed, not by much. So I want to move the gantry so it pulls everything back just a bit. And you can do that with the nuts that are sandwiching the gantry right under here. So I'll just loosen up these two here in the back. And this one in the front, I'm just going to loosen it up a little bit to allow the gantry to go forward just a little. And it's all about where this probe triggers. I probably didn't even move it half a millimeter. It needs to probe right on the cusp of that front probe point. Also notice that this side of the bed was just a little bit lower than this side. It should be about 70 millimeters off the table. This side's correct. That's where it is on the original Prusa. So I'm going to adjust that by moving where this rod sets in the wood just a little bit. All right, with just those two tweaks, let's go ahead and run through the sequence again. Z up, and let's get started. We've made it past all three iterations of the first go around of the leveling, and now it's doing the nine point check. This takes a minute. So this time the calibration completed successfully, and it says it's all right. SKU will be corrected, but that's totally fine. That means the firmware is going to do its job. Let's just see how skewed it is. I left the startup wizard for now just to check. We can restart it if we need to. We'll hit the button, scroll all the way down. Go to support. At the very bottom, there's your calibration details. So your Y distance from minimum, these should be around 0 0.7, 0 0.8, I believe. These are a little high. So that kind of tells you your left and right skew, the bed skewed like this. Then measured skew in degrees, 0.17, that's not bad at all. 0.12 is slight, 0.25 is severe. I'll take 0.17, not bad. Now that the SKU correction is complete, let's move on with the calibration. We should be able to just turn it off and turn it back on, and that will resume where we left off. And now it wants to calibrate the distance between the nozzle and the bed. So we're going to do first layer calibration. So we can just do that part manually. So we'll hit the button. Let's preheat for PLA. So we'll load some filament. And we're preheated, so let's run that first layer calibration. Calibration. First layer calibration. PLA is loaded. And then as it's printing, we're going to use the live Z-Adjust. Needs to come down a little bit. 0.630 looks good. 
We can just hit the button to save it. First layer calibration is complete. We finally started to stick down here and my square is looking pretty good. So really the only things I have left to do is calibrate the E-steps on the extruder. This isn't the same extruder gear that original Prusa uses, so we'll want to change that. And we'll probably want to run a PID tune because these aren't the same thermistors that Prusa uses, but you can do that from the menu and it'll just save it in EEPROM. You can just go to the menu, you can go to calibration, and you can go to PID calibration. We'll set it for 210. We'll just let it run through the process. It does it five times, and then it'll save it in EEPROM. And another advantage to using Genuine Prusa firmware is we can use all of the settings from Slick 3R for the default Prusa machines. So I can just use the regular Mark II profile. It might need some tweaks. I can use the Prusa filament settings because they have linear advance commands in them, as well as the print settings that have linear advance higher speeds. And as far as printer settings go, it's going to be exactly like the stock machine because it's the same firmware. Custom G codes, same way. It's going to be the same commands. Machine limits, the speed, it should be able to match those pretty close. The real question comes down to the extruder because it's not the same gear and I don't have a genuine V6 hot end. So retraction is going to be a little bit different, I'm pretty sure of it. But we'll have to compare what the quality is like after the first print. So we're just going to leave it stock and do a print. So let's export some G-code. And before we start our print, there's one last tweak that I'd like to make to this printer. And it says Prusa i3 Mark II. This is a Prusa i3 log. Much better. Now we're ready to print. And that's it. We're one step closer to the real thing. Now, not only is the firmware going to give you access to XYZ calibration, but it's going to let you use Live Z Adjust and the silent power mode if you'd like. And pairing it with the stock Slick 3R profile, you'll have linear advance baked in, and the speed settings will be comparable to the genuine Prusa. Also, the only thing I did outside this video was that PID tune, and I set the E steps on the extruder to 127 to compensate for the extruder gear that I use. The main differences in between this machine that isn't obvious and a genuine Prusa is now the V6 hot end. This one has a clone V6, the Prusa has a genuine V6. So as far as quality and speed goes, I definitely want to test all that out, but that'll be for another video. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.